Welcome back to Paranormal Perspective. I'm John Lorden, and joining me as always is... Christy Arnhart. This is the show where Christy does the research. She looks into a paranormal or paranormal adjacent topic. I don't get any insight into what she's looking into, um, except it appears that we might be covering a story I actually suggested to you today. He, he did, Gus. Okay. He did. Okay. So I know a yeah, little bit about it, but I haven't researched it. Um, <laughs> we do this in front of a live studio audience and they decide kind of which side wins. So Christy, what are we talking about here today? Today, we'll be discussing the many relics of Buddha. One in particular is one of his teeth that resides in the Buddhist temple in Rosemead, California. Interesting, interesting. All right, should I bring up the slideshow? Is there a slideshow? Just oh, pictures. Just pictures. Is that what you meant? Yeah. Well, I make a slideshow out of it. I'm, I'm taking That's credit true. for, you know, actually flipping through the, the pictures here. <laughs> Here we go. This, we of course, go. is Buddha. Buddha means the awakened one. I enjoyed researching this because I got to learn more about Buddhism and I've always enjoyed their beliefs and how they live. And, and just to learn all about this stuff was so very interesting. Hold on a second. Is this Has Buddha been taking Ozempic? Because I thought Buddha was was a little rounder than, than this person. Well, there have been different Buddhas and you get all kinds of different statues of Buddha too. I have one on my front porch that I keep with my plants and it's got to be Japanese Buddha okay. because it, it doesn't look like any of these. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yep. So Buddha, the awakened one, the founder of Buddhism was Siddhartha Gautama or Shakaya Muni. He went by, he was known by a couple of different names. Okay. And he lived and taught 2,600 years ago. He was the first Buddhist to reach enlightenment. And he found it after years of travel and meditation and work on himself. I can't, I mean, just hearing some of the things he did, my goodness. He realized during this time that enlightenment could only be reached by what he called the middle way. You can't be rich. You can't be poor to achieve it only by living by the middle way, which seeks answers through a balanced life that avoids extremes like self-indulgence and self-denial. Can you attain enlightenment? He explained that all of our problems and suffering come from confused negative states of mind and all our happiness and good fortune come from peaceful and positive states of mind. And that's how, you know, I prefer to live, but I have a temper and people get under my skin. So I guess I need to practice this more. <laughs> I've always wondered he, about this myself, Christy, because, you know, when I was a kid, I kind of I had this dream of like, oh, wouldn't it be great to be a big movie star or something like that? And then you see these scandals all the time involving yeah. movie stars and, you know, substance abuse and even big stars in terms of music, you know, everyone dying when they're 27 years old. And yeah. as I've gotten older in life, I've kind of hit this understanding about like, no, maybe I'm, I'm at the space I'm supposed to be at because mm -hmm. I do feel pretty well balanced. And I think most of my friends, I mean, they might say he's a little obnoxious about this Netflix number one stuff. <laughs> no. <laughs> See, I'm pretty sure she disagreed <laughs> with that statement. Um, but honestly, I've just been throwing that around just for the sake of having fun with it. Like, um, and I feel completely fulfilled. Interestingly, the point where my life really turned around was when I pulled out of chasing a big corporate job and chasing stacks and stacks of money and decided that I wanted to try to find the thing on YouTube that was gonna be helping people in a way. And at first I thought it was making their day a little bit better by making them laugh or lightening the mood for them or something like that. And then I found it was much more serious than that. I was gonna help people that really needed help in really traumatic situations. Um, and it was like a switch. I mean, it was like a light switch. Like as soon as I kind of opened that within myself, just everything changed and took care of itself and pretty soon i'm not even mm -hmm. living in california anymore i'm just out of all of that energy out of that environment mm -hmm. um and enjoying life in a completely different way so that statement really resonates with me just about the that the path to happiness is isn't going to be one of extremes necessarily that mm -hmm. it's one of of balance even to the point of you know the races i run and you know staying physically fit and 
uh, mm -hmm. trying to find a balance with that too because I've certainly struggled with that throughout my life. So yeah, yeah, I really like this. Oh yeah, it's. I think Buddhism's wonderful. He even taught methods that helped you overcome anger, jealousy, and ignorance, and for developing love, compassion, and wisdom. You know, positive, positive, positive. Turn the negatives into positives. Yeah. So if you're able to attain this state, it's said that you'll come to experience lasting peace and happiness throughout your life. And that's what we're all looking for, right? That sounds like a good goal to me. I'd rather take <sighs> that than stacks of cash. Wait, would I? Yeah, no, I think Well, I, I mean, we all would, but that <laughs> comes with its problems. Well, too. yeah, I mean, we want to be taken care of. So, I yeah, yeah, definitely. According to Sri Lankan legends, when 80 year old Buddha died in 543 BC, and he died, they believe, from either eating a tainted piece of mushroom or pork, but it was something to do with his food. Oh, goodness. They cre Yeah, they cremated him. And this is something that they do uh, for all of the enlightened ones. And even some of the monks, they won't realize were as enlightened as they were, but they do once they cremate him. Now, he was cremated in a sandalwood pyre in Kushana Kushinagar. Okay. And then the remains were distributed across the continent. But that wasn't originally what was supposed to happen. Is this, this a depiction? Yeah, of, that depicts yeah. the War of the Buddha relics right okay. there. And the city because, of Kushinagar. Yeah. Hmm? It, says, yes. it says it's the city of Kushinagar in the war. Mm -hmm. yeah. So originally Buddha is supposed to be all kept together. But when people started to realize that it wasn't just his ashes, that there were lots of relics contained within them, a huge war started. This is the war for the relics. Okay. Now, eventually, all of his remains were split between eight different kingdoms, and they left it at that. A century later, those relics were collected again and redistributed by Ashoka the Great. And we've even got a picture of him. But, uh, all right. Yeah. Do you see serious. how it's a slideshow now? Are you finally buying into how it takes some skill for me to hear the prompt and kind of... I'm getting better. I'm getting better. So I'm not, apparently. Time, I just everything... lost my balance. All that balance I was talking about just tilted tilted right out the window. All right. <laughs> we got to find the middle ground again. Yeah. So he got all of the relics together and distributed them in 84,000 different directions. Jeez. Which... He And he did it through different countries as well. And it helped spread Buddhism throughout Asia. Mm. And I don't know. It's It was a wonderful thing that he did. Buddhism has spread to every country now. But the relics are insanely interesting. They include teeth, bones, hair. The hair moves on its own. There, and there are thousands of gem-like relics. Now, they're called sharira in Sanskrit, and they're originally described as pearl or gem-like deposits collected from ashes of spiritual masters after their cremation. So, I mean, just imagine. Interesting. Some of them look like pearls. Yeah. Some of them look like gems. I mean, I guess if you did take the ashes and if they were you know, compressed in some way, you could actually make gems out of them. So I'm just wondering if someone had done that, like some kind of treatment to them. Well, tra tra traditionally, they're taken to be signs of the deceased, the deceased <laughs> spiritual attainments. Hmm. The fifth century Indian scholar, Buddha Gosha, he wrote about Shakyamuni's death and he described how resplendent translucent jewel-like deposits were left behind in the ashes, looking like washed pearls, pieces of gold, and jasmine buds. They were small, like a mustard seed or a lentil. But the different colors, because some of them do look like pearls. Some of them are blue, red, they're clear. You get clear crystal ones. And all of those colors are supposed to tell you what organs and part of the body they came from during the cremation process. You get gold for flesh, pearl for bone, red jasmine from blood, things like that. These relics 
are known for the phenomena of producing new colorful crystals called baby relics. And we have a picture of that as well. And it's attached to the teeth of one, one of Buddha's teeth. Oh, geez. I mean, it's covered with these little crystals. <laughs> it looks and like caviar almost. The yeah. <laughs> wow. Hmm. Even the ones in the bowls that they have will multiply. Weird. So these relics are all over the world today. Visitors from everywhere come to visit them, you know, to offer prayers and things like that. They've people have tried to destroy them throughout the years. Mm -mm. Can't be destroyed. Even the one time that a Christian bishop, I think it was, was said to have destroyed one of Buddha's teeth, it's not verified. So we don't actually know if he did it or not. But mm. yeah, they can't beat them. They're here for good. So there is one tooth in particular that's held in the Lou Mountain Temple in Rosemead, California. Just an unassuming little place. It is the longest human tooth on record. It is two inches long. They say it's almost three inches at this point. The longest human tooth in history was, according to the Guinness Book of World Records, 1.26 inches long. So it doesn't even compare to what they're holding on to here. This thing is giant. Yes, it is. It is. Was it's Buddha a grown. giant? Like that, that the size of that tooth would suggest that his head was three or four times the size of ours. And see, I don't think it was. I think the relics have grown okay. because the more positive energy, the more prayer and, you know, meditating that you do, it just boosts these things. It's like they just collect all of that goodness. So now it's thousands of years later, it's continuing to grow. And they say now it's four times the length of the average human tooth. That's amazing. And the monks say it's its special powers. It's its healing powers. It's all this positive energy that it has. That's what makes it grow. The monk said that when this relic, well, there were a bunch of relics brought in at the same time, but this was like the, the, the jewel at the top of the crown. When they brought them into the temple, one of the ladies who had went there for years, she was 80 years old, and she had always had leg pain since she was a child. It could be debilitating. After the relics came in and she prayed, she's healed. She has no more problems with her leg. They, The day that they brought in these relics, baby sparrows tried to peck their way into the room where the tooth was stored before it could even be unveiled to the public. You've got, they let off radiant lighting. They let off strong odors. And if you're pumping them full of positive energy, you get sweet scents. But if you've got people who are just using them, I don't know, for money or bad purposes, they start to stink horribly bad. Hmm. <sighs> yeah, wouldn't that be nice, you know, to be doing your prayer and doing your meditation and have that sweet smell. It, yeah. it just, I don't know, it's just neat. Now, I know the tooth looks huge, and your first thought is automatically, well, it's got to be from an animal. Uh, yeah. Well, some of the relics, they will not let anybody look at these relics or test them. But you've had people who have looked very closely, you know, specialists have looked at the teeth from pictures and videos, and they claim that some of them are flat out, you know, ones from a water buffalo and, and things like that. They're like, those aren't real. This one, nobody has, as far as I know, ever said anything. You know, they, they allow you to come in and look at it, but that's it. You can't touch. You can't examine like, you know, the crystals that come out of the Buddhist body. I looked it up. I'm like, what are they? What are they made out of? Well, we don't know. They won't tell us. And they, well, it's not really that they won't tell us. They, they have their spiritual thoughts about what it is, but it's a crystal. It's something quantifiable. And I just want to test them. Yeah. All of this really bad, really bad. Because <laughs> even hair, how does hair not be destroyed in the fire? Yeah. Yeah. They were sacred. Now, anytime you ask one of the monks, can we DNA test it? Can we this? The, the, no. What's sacred is in the eye of the beholder. 
is what they'll tell you. The temple completely dismissed any type of DNA testing on the tooth, all of it. They said it's unlikely that any Buddhist temple or its devotees will agree to subject any sacred Buddha tooth or relic to such a test. Yeah. And that's true of a lot of different religions. Yeah, it reminds me of the conversation we had about Okiku. And at some point, um, it's the, the that's the doll where the hair is continuing to grow. Um, at some point, the belief becomes so strong and so important that any value in terms of a scientific explanation is kind of lost. And especially for something like Buddha, like something related to Buddha, um, I, I think that's going to be a pretty hard sell uh, because the people that are in ownership of this and taking care of it, they're not going to care what any an analysis says or, or what science no. has to say about it. Um, they already believe that they know enough about it. Uh, I did look up just a quick search on um, can teeth grow after death? And admittedly, this is coming from AI. <laughs> the Gemini AI is responding. Teeth are the hardest part of the human body and are resistant to environmental factors and decomposition, making them the last part of the body to decompose after death. Um, so, which obviously it's also mentioning is a factor with criminal cases. That's why teeth are often found, often left behind. That's why dental records have been so important for decades in terms of identification and stuff like that. Um, and also, you know, like the isotope testing and things that we're doing with, with teeth of remains nowadays to figure out what someone ate, what part of the world that they were from. Uh, so it's interesting. And grunge.com, which I'm not super familiar with in terms of uh, if they're a, a good source or not, <laughs> considering their, their top list is weird, history, crime, entertainment. I mean, it's just when you start with weird. Um, <laughs> what happens to your teeth after you die? They are actually saying that um, your teeth basically stop decomposing as soon as you die. And I believe the gist of this article is that as your body is decaying, um, you know, all of the resources are basically going to your teeth and your teeth just stop decomposing at that point. Well, if you also consider the fact that they're not being used anymore after yeah, you die. Yeah, there's no more bacteria. Yeah, no more Our bacteria. Exactly. We're not using them. They're not being pressed against each other. So all of the wear and tear that happens to them effectively stops when we pass away. Um, but I can't quite find anything in terms of them growing and... What I find interesting in terms of these photos, and I noticed this, um, I was watching, I think it was called Unexplained on the History Channel. Mm -hmm. uh, would with, that be uh, a William Shatner show? Yeah, yeah, that would be the William Shatner show. Okay. Um, and even in that photo, the first thing I noticed was that the tooth seems to have several different levels kind of in it like there's a discolorization that's happening down around the root which you might expect that would kind of be normal for where it was in the gums um, but then there's kind of a middle section there looks like there's another line then there's a top section you can almost see another line kind of above that it just it almost looks like something that has been grown not added to necessarily because the shape is very consistent as it goes up but it it it's just, it, it's bizarre. It looks like it's something that has had a few different periods of growth. Like it kind of grew that bottom section and then stopped for a long time. And then all of a sudden the next top third decided it was going to start growing at some point. Um, it is really interesting to look at. Plus William Shatner told me it's real. So there's, there's that. Well, I mean, come on. <laughs> well, this tooth was donated to the Buddhist temple from someone in Vietnam who had collected thousands of relics of Buddha over the years, and they wanted to help spread Buddhism to Southern California. So is it possible that the line striations are from periods of, you know, worship and positive energy that people give it? Maybe it goes into like stasis when it's not being looked at or maybe, maybe. given positive energy to. Yeah, um, we've got some live viewers that are watching. Some of them believe that it's either uh, basically it, it's a horse or a bovine tooth. Um, I mean, it 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 is that is something that I'm struggling with. Just the size, in particular, with this picture because you could see it in relation to someone's body. Mm -hmm. Just look at the roots here. 
Like, That's what makes it so magical. Christy, you couldn't have more than mm -mm. two teeth in your whole head. <laughs> <laughs> if no, this you'd was have the like size. four of them and that's it. Maybe. And you wouldn't be able to close your mouth. It'd be open all the time. <laughs> mm -hmm. It is just very, very large. It's very, yeah. very big. I totally believe it's Buddhist too. What's the video that we have on this? This is from one of the monks in the temple at Southern California. And he's talking about the relics and, it, and what they do. All right, let's take a look. Hello, my name is Master Yong Hua. I reside here at the Lu Mountain Temple. It's a pleasure to introduce to you the 10,000 Buddha Relics Collection. Shriers in Sanskrit are the crystallized remains that formed when the Buddha's body was cremated. This rare oval-shaped shriar came from his heart. The price of our collection is a tooth relic. This tooth is almost three inches long. It has been growing since the Buddha entered Nirvana about 3,000 years ago. It is said that seeing the Buddha's relics is the same as seeing the Buddha himself. It will bring peace and prosperity and safety to this country. There is no sarcasm in what I'm saying at all. Whether it is Buddha's tooth or not, it's like any Christian relic that we have as well. If you put that much positive thought and imagery into any object, I think that it starts to take on almost a life of its own. It starts to reflect what you're giving to it. Well, and yeah, so honest. You have to appreciate how people are taking to this. Like it, it's connecting them with their faith in some way. So, yeah. you know. To, to knock it's, that is like, I mean, think of all the good that's happening from this. But, you, you know, oh, yeah, looking at it's it, it's like uh, the Shroud of Turin. Everybody wants yeah. to cut it up. Everybody wants to test it. Oh, it's yeah. not really Jesus. It doesn't matter. Yeah. People but, find they find happiness and strength in these things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we do have a responsibility doing this show, though. And that is to at least review the information that I can find and oh, that the yeah. audience cues me in on. And part of that is. I do believe it's a prehistoric tooth, like thousands of years old. I, I do think Ooh. that's accurate because I found this picture. That's beautiful. Isn't the shape is of it one? interesting? Like the striations yeah. that you're kind of seeing? Where is it? This is an ancient horse tooth that was found. Yeah. And I've got one more here because um, we did have some people that were suggesting it could be horse, could be cow. Oh, I mean, it, it totally could. Yeah. I mean, I'm Here's not an cow. expert on yeah. teeth or anything like that. Yeah. And what's you interesting know, about this one is look at this kind of ridge that's in the center of it here. Mm -hmm. And then really this photo shows it better. Look at that. Mm-hmm. That's a pretty close match, I think. Mm -hmm. But once again, these are ancient also. These are thousands of years old, these these fossil, fossils. Well, and Buddha's tooth is thousands of years old. Yeah. But I do. I mean, I just, I always, you know, they're like, look, it's Buddha's tooth. I'm like, really? Awesome. That's, that's as much <laughs> as I look. <laughs> you know, but yeah, I mean, it totally, of course, it could totally be an animal or something like that. But at this point, it doesn't matter because it's brought so much to other yeah, people. And, I don't, and it's considered, you know, to be a part of Buddha now. It's still, it still has power. It has a real power. Mm. That's the bizarre thing. Like, I, is it supernatural or not? I don't think so. But can you oh, deny the power that faith has for, for people that go to worship there or mm -hmm. that want to go witness it? But it's something that even if they think it's but just a part of Buddha. And it really isn't. If it really is some animal remain, um, mm -hmm. does that change all the good that it's doing? I don't, I don't think so. No, um, it doesn't. And I just love living in my world where it's really Buddha's tooth. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, where does the audience land on this? We put the question to them. Are any of the relics supernatural? 
Do you think that was fair, Christy? Fair way to phrase it? Yes. Okay. Yes. They totally are. We had 39. I'll actually up that. We had 40% say yes. We had 60% say no. So we had pretty close to a 50-50, but unfortunately, not quite enough to keep you from having to watch this again. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the old cheat. I just loved researching that one. And I didn't think that I would. I had saw that on The Unexplained as well. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And I enjoyed I enjoyed that episode. Yeah. Do you think his delivery is a little over the top on The Unexplained? Like sometimes he, he slows the sentences down so hard and he just like stares at the, that's it's, why it's unexplained. <laughs> it just well, really rolls it down. That, that's the wisdom of the chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You and, pay attention to him better that way. Yeah, and I, I have to. I, my hat's off to a man that is 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 he he's pushing on his nineties, right? And he's still working. Oh, he's so old. He's yeah. so old. Yeah, his face barely moves now. Yeah, he's still working. I watched some thing where he went swimming with sharks with Josh Gates. Like he's just he's doing amazing things for his age. You can't knock it. Might not be the nicest guy in showbiz. I'll say that. Might have banned me on Twitter for no reason at all. I'll say that. But I guys, can't. this is the email that I got. So I got stuck watching that stupid William Shatner show. <laughs> <laughs> and I knew exactly what he was talking about as soon as he said yeah, it. <laughs> yeah. But after that, I watched another William Shatner show, the one with him and Josh Gates. It was like for a shark week or something. And he did. He literally went swimming with sharks. And I'm kind of amazed by him. I'm kind of oh, amazed. Me by too, because you're not going to catch me doing that. Yeah. Mr. Arnhart wants to swim with sharks. They have this, or they used to have this deal in Springfield at the Bass Pro, where you could go in and actually go down in a cage with somebody mm -hmm. with you know scuba gear on, and that they let the shark swim all around you and whatnot. And he wants to do that so bad. Yeah, yeah, we'll have to remember that. No, I just made sure all of our life insurance policies were up to date <laughs> just in case well christy you did not win today but you did win in terms of pulling together some really compelling information and it, i i have a sweet feeling in my heart from this story so thank you for sharing that with yeah. us thanks to everyone for hanging out with us here today and we will catch you on the other side